Happy Halloween, my Winthrop University family. My name is Barbie McCann. I graduated with the class of 2012 with a BA in theater with an emphasis in tech and design. But today I'm here to show you how to do a beautiful witch makeup, green skin and all. We're gonna leave the warts behind though, that'll be for another video. If you've ever done your makeup for everyday basis or if you've done theater or stage makeup of any kind or maybe even some drag, you're already ahead of the game for this makeup, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Hi, okay, so on this video, we're gonna be doing our beautiful witch tutorial. So that's the one that's got a little bit more of a contour, a little bit of a beautiful eye, and then we're also gonna do a lovely lipstick with that. So today we're gonna to start out, for any makeup, you're gonna to wanna to do your moisturizer, eye cream, and a little bit of chapstick, a little bit of something, um, especially for character makeup. Because with character makeups, you can often stain your skin, and especially if you're buying something from the Halloween store, this will help protect and prime your skin for the makeup we're gonna to do today. And with that in mind, it'll help keep that makeup from seeping in and giving you a little bit of a green cast on November 1st, you know, after Halloween or whatever party you're going to. So, I've already done that, but you wanna do that and give yourself about five minutes, okay? To let all that dry up and seep in and, and make your skin really beautiful for this. It's also okay to go ahead and use a primer. However, if you're gonna be doing this for kids, uh, you just want to make sure that your kids' faces are clean and go from there. If you have a moisturizer, like a, a baby lotion or something like that that you like to use on your kids, then that might be something good to use right now. And go ahead and then let that sink in for a little bit more too because we don't want our kids to go to school the next day looking good. So, now that, that we've done that and we've allowed everything to dry, we're going to move on to the next step. You're going to want to use a green cream makeup. You can get this at Walmart or any other store that's in your town and locally, or you can go online to Amazon or any other kind of makeup website that you want and order a Ben Nye Green Cream is what I'm using today. Literally the Ben Nye Cream Liner in green. Uh, that's what we're going to be using, so you can just see green. Uh, but you don't have to use that. You can use any shade of green you want, any cream you want. You can also use a water activated makeup if you'd like. But for today's purposes, I'm going to show you how to use cream because I'm expecting many people to go out and get those little cream stick kits that you can get during Halloween in the Halloween section, okay? So what I'm going to do, when you're at home, you don't have to do this, but I like to do this, is palette out some of my makeup. I'm going to take a very little bit. You don't need a whole lot. Just a tiny bit. And I'm going to put that... For me, I'm using one of my palettes from my kit, but you can use a paper plate, you can use um, a side plate at home, like ones you would use for salads, things like that. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to use, anything disposable, but you want it to be a little bit sturdy. So I wouldn't use, for example, a napkin, because that's hard to work with and it's flimsy. So next, I'm going to take a brush. This is an e.l.f. brush called an e.l.f. Small Stipple Brush. You can get this at Target and Walmart. They're usually about one to three dollars, so very cheap. You don't have to, but it looks a little packed, but the top is very loose. And I'm gonna tap it into my green makeup. Take that, and I'm gonna start just like this. I know it looks silly, but you're just gonna tap it in all over so that we start to get product all over our face. Now when it comes to where you're gonna place the green on your face, you're gonna to wanna to cover all of your skin. All right, anything that's gonna be visible. So that means our face, our necks, anything that's visible like that. And then, once you've gotten all that done, I'm not gonna go all the way down today, but for example, especially in theater, we would take this all the way down and blend it out past where our costume would go. You can buy, for example, a green turtleneck and bring that up so that you don't have to do so much. But once you've got that going, start blending in your green. What I'm doing is I'm doing circular motions. This may take a little time. It's always going to start off looking a little transparent, and that's okay. We expect that. All right. 
circular motions, get this moved around. I'm gonna keep doing that and then we're gonna come back, okay? And if you find that as you're doing these circular motions that you're running out of makeup, it is okay to use more, obviously. And you're just gonna keep piling on. For what I'm doing today, because I intend to do some sort of lipstick, I'm just gonna brush the outsides of my lips. Not all the way in. So that I don't muddle my lipstick later. But you're gonna just keep patting on and swirling on until you get a nice, even coverage, okay? And if that means taking more of your stick or your cream or what have you, do it. All right. And when it comes to your eyes, you wanna cover your eyes as well. Because then later when we do do our makeup on top of our eyes, it will blend more and look like it's sitting on top of green skin and not just separate from the rest. Also, when you come up to your hairline, especially if you plan on wearing a wig for Halloween, which I always think is a lot of fun, you wanna work the cream into your hairline, which means you should also work your moisturizer from our first step into your hairline. Make sure to work into your eyebrows as well starting to turn green. And you'll want to do your ears as well if your ears are exposed, if you're going to wear an updo or something like that. If your hair is down or if the wig that you're going to wear is down, don't worry about it. This is for Halloween. We're just having fun after all. Adding more green to my palette so I can finish up under here and still work on getting a nice clean finish. And like I said, depending on what you wear and what's going on, you may want to continue blending that down, okay? If you're having trouble, if it looks like it's getting streaky in some spots, stamp, 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 stamp into your makeup and stamp into those spots. Sometimes with these brushes, because the ends are so separated and spread out. It feels like it's moving things and this makeup too, cream makeup as it heats up, wants to move around on your face. So sometimes you're going to have to stamp, stamp, stamp. Don't forget to check your nose, okay? Foreheads tend to be very oily as well as warm. Tend to do a lot of our sweating from our foreheads. So you're probably going to have to do a lot of stamping motions here as well. Alright, you want to try and get as close to your lash line as you comfortably can. There you go. Hard to tell because of my lighting in here. Makes it very shiny. It's got a pretty even skin so far. See any spots where it looks darker than everything else? Just buff it out. All right. So next piece that we're gonna do is our highlight. For my highlight, I'm gonna start actually with a little bit of yellow 
again. Take a small amount. Put it on our palette. And then you may also want to take a little bit of white nearby. Or orange. To mix these colors together and get a highlight that works for you. The idea with a highlight is to look like your own skin tone. In this case, green. Is our skin tone. I'm gonna to work with a little bit more yellow and just a kiss of white in there. And then you're gonna take your highlight, so I'm using this where I've mixed it. You're gonna take it, your highlight and you're gonna put it on the high planes of your face, okay? So we tend to have high planes here, here, top of our bone here, top of here, everywhere you see light hitting. See how there's light here? So I'm gonna put highlight here as well, down the center of my nose, boop. And if you feel like it, a little bit at the top of your mouth, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe the excess off this brush. Once I'm done. You can also do highlight here if that's your thing. For my face shape, I don't like to, but you are more than welcome to. And next you're gonna just blend, 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 blend. You can always come back with your green brush as well and help blend the bottom edge. Highlights tend to blend up in this spot. But really what you're trying to do is just accomplish the shapes you want. You want a fan shape or a sunrise shape. For those looking for a more feminine shape, it is a feminine shape. For those looking for a more masculine shape, you tend to have stronger, almost a goal post bone structure. So feel for what's in your face and go after that. For the character that you're building. And you'll find that your brush starts to turn green. That's okay. That's what normally happens here. start to see those face shapes coming forward. If you go too far down, that's okay. Come back in with that green from before. Tap a little green on it. And just come in and tone it down. Like that. And you can already see my cheekbone taking shape. Be careful too touching your own face. You don't want to risk wiping your makeup off. And if you still don't think it's quite where you want it to, that's okay. Just keep going until you get the look you want.
Try different movements, see what works for you. Right now I'm tapping. You'll find different things work for different brushes and different parts of your face. And again, if you use up all your makeup, just go back and get some more. If you don't feel that your yellow is popping enough, that's what the white is for. You can mix in more white, a little orange. I feel like it's looking a little more yellow on my top than it is on my side, so I'm adding a little bit more yellow in. And if your brush becomes overloaded, it's also okay to grab a different brush. Sometimes I like to deliver the color with one brush, and you can be on with another. Blend it in. Now you're gonna look and feel a little silly at this point, and that's totally normal. All right, because we do look silly at this point. But, we do have our first steps. All right, now, you're done with these creams, which we have done with cream, we are gonna move on to powders. You're gonna take a translucent powder, or if you have a greenish yellow powder, which most people don't, you're gonna take your translucent powder on a puff or a brush, and you're gonna tap it in. It looks a little silly at first, But what the powder does is it sets our creams in place. We've built our foundation now. And what it's doing is from the bottom side where it's touching the makeup, it's being absorbed. All right. Your puff will start to turn green from touching other areas of your makeup. And powder setting will also make your makeup last and give it some longevity, all right? This means if you sweat a bit, if you rub your face, it's less likely to come off now, all right? Also keep in mind when you're making identical shapes, identical shapes on your face, that these shapes are not twins. They're not even sisters. They are cousins. Our faces are not symmetrical. And although we try our best to make them more symmetrical, because we believe that symmetrical is 
for anything more pretty. The truth is that we are actually more attracted to asymmetrical faces. All right. So at this point, you're gonna do something you've probably heard of, and if not, that's all okay, but it's called baking. So baking is just when you've kicked yourself in powder like this, you're gonna give yourself a couple minutes to just sit in all of this. So, making sure that you get all this. Don't forget under your neck, anywhere you put this cream. powder around. Really press it into creases. That's where you're gonna lose your makeup first. Throughout tonight. Alright. So that's that. And you're gonna let it bake. We're gonna come right back. Okay, so now we've allowed ourselves to bake. So now what we're going to do, we're gonna take a large fluffy powder brush, right? Large, big, doesn't matter where you get it from. You're gonna take all this off. Just brush it down. As you can see, you've already got the basis for your highlights and all that. You may feel cakey, you will feel cakey, all right? Your brush may get a little green, that's okay. That could mean that you need more powder, but we will get to that, don't worry, all right? Okay, so next step we're gonna take is we are gonna contour, all right? Woo, contouring, yes, that wonderful fabled thing we have all heard about, contouring. So I'm gonna start out, I have a little bit of green powder. I'm gonna build up my contour. That's the number one thing to do, build up. You can always add more, you can't take away. All right, so when I'm doing a character makeup contour like this, I actually like to get something that has a flat edge. This happens to be the plastic that came with my palette. For this, I'm using the Warrior 3 by Juvia's Place. You see we got a lovely green powder. So that's what we're gonna start off with. All right. Feel for where the middle of your ear under your cheekbone is. That's where you want the bottom contour. And I try to aim for the corner of my mouth. Take my brush. And then I'm just gonna blend like that. Focus it on this back corner here, working up. Never really bringing it all the way down, okay? You're just kissing some of that color in there, all right? And try not to lose your grip on this because it can be a pain in the butt to line it back up. It's doable, done it, but it can be a pain in the butt, all right? And try to keep your palettes open as well. It'll make your makeup go a lot faster and a lot easier. All right? And if it starts to blend up into your highlight, no big deal. That's what makes it more natural looking, okay? So then we've got that one in. See how beautiful that is? We're gonna do all our green contours first and then we're gonna come back in with our black contours. Ooh. Mm. See the difference? Very snatched. Blending it up for a beautiful witch. All right, same thing we're gonna do over here, only in reverse, okay? Find the bottom of your jaw and down to here, okay? Like that. Look at that, gorgeous, right? Don't worry so much when I get here because we have more of an organic shape here. The sharp line here 
helps really delineate where the light part of our face is. And once you've got that line in, you can also just go in with the color you want to use, like that. And then two, know how we built the fan shape, the sunset here. You're going to use that powder up on your hairline now to help darken things in and a little bit at your temple, okay? Now for my more masculine wishes out there, if you want to know what to do, since we're doing the fan shape for my more feminine witches, for the masculine witches, you have, like I said, that slight goalpost more build to it. And so you don't really want to bring any of that shade up. But if this is where you're lining up, you're just going to work back and forth like that, okay? But for now, and I'm working again in those same circular motions we started out with, I'm going here, all right? Now I'm going to do the same on the other side, and then we'll be back. So then, once you've got things pretty even and a little blended, done both sides now, you're going to continue with your small contours. These are our large contours, okay? Jawline, cheekbones, actually this is our inner cheeks, this is our cheekbones, and temples into hairline, okay? What you're going to work on next is your smaller contours. Smaller contours are sides of the nose to give us smaller noses or larger noses if you want a larger nose. I also tend to do right here so it makes your chin pop forward just a little bit more and makes the lips look a little more prominent. And what you'll see later, we're not going to do them today because we don't necessarily want to call attention to them in our beautiful witch. But if you go to the video on how to do our ugly, craggy old witch, you'll also do here in what's called the nasal labial folds, okay? But for today, we're just going to do side of the nose, top of the chin, all right? So you're going to take some more of that little green powder, and about here where your contour from your eye would come out. So you're going to draw a little line, just like that, all right? You can bring it all the way down to the end of your nose, if your nose feels too long, you can shorten it by doing the edge of your nose like that. Do the same on the other side. Just like that, and then blending down. Boom. Do a little here. Basically look for where the lines in your face are. And if there's any you want to accentuate, them. Helps for the character makeup for sure. And also tap up axis. It just makes certain parts of your face more prominent. And right now I just look really funny, right? But that's okay. We're not gonna look funny forever. All right, so that's my contour's done. Boom, beautiful. Then I'm going to take another fluffy brush. This time I'm going to take a smaller one. This one. All right. And I'm actually going to pick up yellow powder. All right. Again, from that Juvia's Place Warrior 3 palette, right next to our green, bright yellow. So I'm going to start off with that yellow, tap off the excess, and And you're going to blend it down towards your contour. So that they almost seem to melt together, you know? I also like to smile so I can see how the shape of my cheek works while I'm doing that. And I'm just going to be putting this everywhere that I have highlight. All right. And we're going to go to one new highlight spot as well right here. I 
brow bone part of our eyes. And I'm blending mine all the way down in. You don't have to if you like a demarcation or a separation from your highlight on your brow bone and your cheekbone. That's what I'm feeling. You can also add the yellow in here for a more cohesive look. But this is your character. This is your time. You decide what that looks like for you. I'm doing just a little bit. I'm noticing too that this seems to curve up while this just goes down, so. This I would only do if you're very comfortable with working with contour. But if you ever do anything anywhere, since we're working with powders, you can take that fluffy powder brush and you can just work through those areas you think you may have overdone a little bit and blend it down. Alright? It's like Bob Ross. We just have happy little accents, no mistakes. It's all good, okay? So, now that we've done this part of our face, I like to move on to the regular makeup. This is gonna be just like a normal beauty makeup you do on your face, except you're gonna use colors that you might not use. We're gonna do some extreme stuff, okay? First, I'm gonna start off with black. I always do my creases first. I'm going to use a dark, dark gray, and then we're going to go from there. Now I'm using the Warrior 2 palette from Juvia's Place, and we're going to use the Walzana, which is this dark charcoal gray color. You want to use a fluffy brush. All right, we'll go in with the black last. Look for where the shape of your eyes and where the end of your eyebrows are. And I'm just barely touching. Just barely touching. Just to get that pull up, that little bit of a, a little cat eye there for us, a little cat eye moment, okay? Try to start creating a point and a line. This can be difficult. You know that plastic I used for my contour here? You can use that and line the plastic up if you like. thing on the other side but again remember that our eyes our faces are not identical they're not twins they're not even sisters they're cousins we're related but we're not the same You want to get that blended in. It's okay to bring it a little bit onto your lid right now. In fact, I recommend it. And we're going to deal with it later. That way you can make sure you get more of a complete. Bringing that in. Just like that. See that? Good. Again, you can always go back in with your yellow brush. Brush here and just buff, 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 buff. So you get a little more of what you're looking for. Same up here. Beautiful. Now, same brush, fluffy brush from before with the dark. I'm gonna go on to Shawada which is just a straight up pure black. And you're just gonna go on that outer corner. All right, just give it that punch. A little bit of punch. Okay. And if you feel yourself getting a little hot, maybe a little misty, now's a good time to take that powder puff from before. 
put a little bit more powder on the edge. Tap it in here like this. It's also good when you're working with dark colors around your eye, because if any of it does what we call fallout, will fall onto this powder, and when you wipe this powder down, excuse. All right? Okay. So I've got that relative shape in there. What I'm gonna do next, if you're like me, I like to do my creases next. However, if you're also like me, and you're seeing these moments right here where you're getting wrinkles, just close your eyes and work with thin breath. Back and forth against them until your wrinkles disappear. Looking good. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna take a little bit more of our white cream from before. Put that on our palette or paper plate, whatever you're using. You can use like a stick card stock. Someone send you a greeting card you didn't like, birthday card you didn't like. All right, now we're gonna go in. We're gonna take what's called a filbert, which means it has straight sides up the side and around top. Ladies, femmes, if you have an eyeshadow palette that has come with an actual brush, chances are at least one end is a filbert. Tends to be very thin, tends to have a round top, straight sides, all right? Just get a little bit of that white cream on there. What you're gonna do is carve out An eyelid shape just like that beautiful and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna grab that yellow powder again all right I'm gonna take a brush white cream. I like to work with two to three colors I'm creating makeups like this. I think it tends to help keep it very cohesive. Now I'm going to take a moment and do the other side. All right, now that we have both eyes done, we're going to come back in with a small brush. Pick up the lighter of your two colors, or you can use a brown of your two dark colors. And connect. to your bottom lash line. I start off bringing it really close to my waterline and then I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more. your eyebrows. If you already own something you like to do your eyebrows with, great. Go ahead and use that. 
but then I would go over the top of that with the dark colors. So keeping that look here. I am going to use the same one that we just used, the Walzana. It's a charcoal color. Come in. I like to start blocking out the shape first. Working the bottom of my brow. And bringing it out here. That's then when you can start feathering that shape out. The great thing about character makeup too is if you've ever wanted to try a new brow shape, now is a good time. You can play around, you can see what you want. As long as you kind of stay in the same general area and work with your hair, you can go a little bigger, you can also go a little smaller. Again, remembering that we are cousins, not twins, not sisters. This tends to be where people get really hung up on making sure everything is identical. Don't, don't get hung up on that. It's not that important. All right. And then when you get to about here, check everything. If there's anything you see you want to fix, just go in and do it. Okay. You want to put a little highlight on anything? I'm not going to use any highlighting powder because I've got shimmery lighter powder. Now would be the time. You can do those up here on the edge. You can put it here on the inside of your eyelids. I'm going to put a little bit of gold just for fun. Just start tapping it in there. Especially if it's cream, you want to tap. I'm doing my best to keep it just to the yellow section. Now, we're going to do our eyeliner. You can do your eyeliner in either powder, liquid, pencil, whatever you want. I am going to use gel. I'm going to use MAC Black Track Gel Liner. And again, I'm going to palette it up. Very little bit. And take a small, very small, very thin eyeliner brush. Again, aiming for that outside of my eyebrow as if I were going to draw a point right up to it. And because we have such a dark outside corner edge, I'm not sure we really 
need to go all the way out, but if you feel that a wing is where you live today, you do a wing. I like to work in little strokes and connect as I go. And usually when I'm not making a video, I look down into a mirror to do my eyeliner. It just helps emphasize our eye a little bit more. My eye on this side already looks bigger than my eye on this side. It also makes a good base for your lashes. You want your outer edges to be thicker. In your corners. And just be careful when working around your eye. Your eye naturally doesn't want anything in it or around it. Especially if you're not used to working around your eye. Be prepared for your eye to clutter. Be prepared for your eye to close all suddenly on you. And just make sure when you feel it coming that you just keep your hand still. As still as you possibly can manage. Okay. Now. Once you're done doing your eyeliner and everything else. Oh. Oh, that's just on my lash. You're going to do your mascara. You can use any mascara you want. Anything you already have. Go ahead. And do the tops and the bottoms. If I'm not doing photography or anything like that, if I'm just doing it for me, I always do my mascara first. This isn't a photo shoot or anything like that. Just at home or every day getting ready to go out. Because then my lashes stay cleaner longer. That's right, my lashes, because we're gonna be wearing fake lashes today. So you're gonna take your fake lashes of choice Mine are going to be these fun, longer ones. And I curl them around my finger just to get them used to their shape. I had a friend teach me that once, and it's been great ever since I've learned it. So, you're going to curl it around your finger. And then you're going to take your lash glue. This is just my glue, so I don't mind using it straight from the tube. If you're using a glue that you share with people, plate it. Palette it. Whatever you want to say. Get about 30 seconds. Around your finger. And then you're going to pour it through. Shake your lash. And I give it about 10 seconds to start getting tacky. Now this I do need a mirror for, so I will be right back. All right, I'm gonna give my lashes a little push up once you've got them on. I'm gonna give you that little bit of extra 
Boom. Now that we've done that, you're gonna take your fluffy brush again. You are done with your eyes. You wanna move in the shape of your cheek. Beautiful. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're gonna do our next step, which is punch up the contour just a teensy lazy bit. I'm gonna use my super fluffy brush, small, because we're not gonna use a whole lot of this, okay? Now, if you wanna leave your skin just straight green like this, you are welcome to do so, all right? But I'm gonna bring in our charcoal gray again, almost black shade. Line this back up. Remember I said it was difficult. Just give it that extra bit of punch. Mm. Just that little bit right there. All right. And the reason I'm not using the big brush is I don't want to overwhelm all the green that we did before. But you're going to cover the same sections if you want. Like I said, if you feel you've gone over, just take this and there you go. You can see the difference. Just gives it that little bit of a Halloween vibe, I think. It's not necessary, but leaving the dark green looks a little more natural. But if you just want that little something extra, I'm not going to use it on my nose. I'm not a big nose contour anyway. I'm just here to show you how to do it. You can also always come back in with your green one and blend. And again, I'm not gonna do my full job, but just a little bit. Just like that. Punching, not overwhelming. Perfect. All right. Just like that. All right. And then I also like to include a little blush. You don't have to at this point. If you like her the way she is, go with it. But I love a little blush. I think it brings a little something to every character makeup. I'm going to take a small blush brush. This one. I'm going to go back to that Warrior 3 palette. And I'm going to take a little bit of this Kahina Red here. The red also is going to counteract with the green, which will make the green more green and make the red more red. But I'm also going to take a little bit of Fonty, that pink there as well, okay? So you're going to get a little red on your thing. Tap off the excess, get a little bit of Fonty, the pink. Got that nice mixture of color there. Work it back, but work your apples like that. If you feel you go over, this is the time to go back in with the green. I also do a little pop here and a little pop up at the top. It helps give a little warmth to your face. You by no means have to do these colors. These are options. We're giving you options, people. All right? But 
or go back in with your yellow brush again. Just yellow it up until you like what you're seeing. Work back and forth. All right. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Just a little bit. I just love a cheek. I just love a cheek. What can I say? All right. Now, finally, we're going to do lips. All right. So I'm giving you the options. You've got reds and you've got black color. I'm going to do a little bit of black and a little bit of red. I'm also going for a very sharp shape because again, we're a witch. brushes are for small areas of the face, large brushes are for large areas of the face. For this look, you really want to focus right on the center. It will start to blend with the lipstick on its own. And there you have it. That's it for our lipstick. Actually, that's most of our face. It's done. So now, if you felt that you had any places where you're a little damp or a little sweaty, it's a good time, like for me, to go back in, hit yourself with that powder. All right? If you feel the need. Try not to powder your lips, unless you want to set them. You can powder your lips, it's fine. Nothing's gonna happen. When you're done with that, again, take your fluffy brush after you've quote unquote baked. And brush everything off. And then, if you have it, you can also use a spray bottle with water. So don't worry about this. It doesn't have to be fancy. I've got my Mac Fix Plus here. Uh, spray yourself down. You're going to look a little damp, as you can see. You can see the shine on my face. What this is going to do is help hit any of those points where you have that powder still left. All right. It'll hit it. It'll also help your makeup maybe melt together a little bit better. Also helps set all your makeup. So I have that, and then I also have a shimmer spray. You don't have to use this either, but just, I don't know, give it a try if you want. Also helps, wait for your spray to settle. Also helps rehydrate your skin. 
Your skin's gonna feel really, really dry after all of this, okay? But then now you've got your finished look, a little bit of blush. You do wanna go for more of the finished connected pieces than this opening like I have right here. But again, it's Halloween, we're just doing this for fun. Don't take it too seriously and enjoy yourself. Maybe you've just tried something new and don't worry about it. Your friends are gonna be impressed anyway, okay? So make sure to do your wig, make sure to do your hair, whatever you're gonna do for today. And then change into your costume. You're ready to go, look at that. So we finished, we've done our mouth, we've done our cheeks, we've done our contour, we've done our eyes, we've done our lashes, we've done our brows. Um, thank you guys for joining me today. I hope that you had a lot of fun. I hope that you've learned a little bit about makeup and I can't wait to see your Halloween looks for this week.